Numbers are all around us. They help us understand things. But what if you have a bunch of numbers given to you? For example, the IQ score of every single student in your class or the number of durians that each of your family members can eat. How do you make sense of that? Statistics, that's how. Stats allow us to make sense of large amounts of collected data by presenting it as tables and graphs. This allows us to gather important information like who's the durian king in your family. Yeah. Let's look at this data. These are the scores for 50 students in a maths test. To see the results in a way we can understand, let's put it into a table, like so. From this table, let's create a more comprehensive table so that we can draw a histogram and a frequency polygon. This new table includes class range, upper and lower boundaries, midpoint, frequency, and cumulative frequency. So now, let's draw a histogram. The bottom of each vertical bar is drawn from the lower boundary to the upper boundary. And the height of each bar is marked by the frequency of each class, forming a complete histogram. A frequency polygon is plotted by joining the dots at the center of each bar. To form a frequency polygon, all we have to do is join the midpoints of each class with straight lines. Now, don't forget to extend the line of the graph by one class interval beyond the first and the last midpoints so that the graph touches the x-axis. The trick to do this is to know the gap between each midpoint, which is 5 in this case. Thus, the extension at the lower end is at 7, while at the upper end is at 42. And here you have it, a histogram and a frequency polygon. So let's take a look at this question. The table shows the height frequency distribution of 200 durian trees. The question then requires us to draw an ogive. An ogive plots the cumulative frequency against the upper boundaries. Note that we need another class above the first to mark the cumulative frequency of zero. Let's tabulate that. In this question, the upper boundaries are found by adding 0.5 to the highest value of each class. Adding the frequency of each class to the frequencies of the previous classes gives you the cumulative frequency. So with length on the x-axis and cumulative frequency on the y-axis, we plot the ogive. Using this ogive, we can find the approximate median, the first and the third quartile, and therefore the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is 3 quarter n minus 1 quarter n, where n is the total number of data, which in this case is 200. To find the interquartile range, let's find the corresponding data to the third quartile. Next, we find the corresponding data to the first quartile, which is... So, subtracting these two values gives you the interquartile range of 10 centimeters. I'm Noel Chia, and I'll see you in the next episode of SPM Top Tutor Mathematics.